Welcome to Board Game Casual. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I'm a sucker for a good board game deal. Recently, I bought two games for what seemed like incredible deals on Amazon. Big Boss for $10 and Wits and Wagers, it's Vegas, baby, for $6.99. Big Boss blew me away. This game is an absolute blast, and the production quality is incredible. It feels like the type of premium edition Kickstarter that would be selling for $100, and I feel super lucky and very happy to have scooped it up for only 10 bucks. In fact, I recently posted a whole video where I did an in-depth review of Big Boss singing its praises, how it's an older game that still manages to feel fresh in 2024, and how it's easily worth twice, even three times what I paid for it. So definitely check that video out if you haven't already. Unfortunately, on the opposite side of the spectrum sits Wits and Wagers, it's Vegas, baby. I recently got this one to the table as well, and while the game is decent, it feels every bit of being a $6 production. So in this video, we'll take a closer look at Wits and Wagers, it's Vegas, baby, and I'll talk about what I like most, what I like least, if I thought it was worth the $7 I paid for it, and give it a final score. Here we go! Wits and Wagers is a light party game that can play up to seven and really shines at those six to seven player counts. This game is made for a big group. It's easy to play and very straightforward. In each round, you'll draw a card and read one of the trivia questions that expects a numerical answer. For example, how many calories does chewing gum burn per hour? Generally speaking, these aren't questions people know the answer to, so each player will write their best guess secretly on their whiteboard, trying to be closest without going over. All guesses will be revealed at the same time and placed in order on the game mat. And this is where the fun comes in, because every player is now going to bet on what they think the correct guess is, which helps take the pressure off whether your own guess is right. You may have had a certain number in your head, but when you see the spread, it might change your mind. Or maybe you'll double down on your own guess. You're not limited to betting on a specific guess. You can bet on a range, or even if you think all guesses are too high. And the betting odds and payouts vary accordingly. There are also bonuses each round for having the winning guess. The game is played over seven rounds, and the player with the most money at the end of the game wins. Gameplay. So first, let's talk about the gameplay and experience. Overall, it was decent. Now, I didn't come into this game with any premonitions that this would be some mind-blowing strategy game. I knew exactly what kind of game this was and the audience it was for. I brought this game with me when my girlfriend and I were invited to her parents' house for dinner, along with her aunt and uncle. They all like to play cards, but they're not big modern gamers. In fact, in seeing the games I brought, her aunt said to me, are there a lot of rules? Because I don't want to play anything that's too complicated. So it was the perfect situation for this type of game. Everyone understood right away how to play. While the game certainly isn't bad by any means, it just felt a bit underwhelming. The first thing I noticed is that because the aim of the game is to be closest without going over, people, including myself, were purposely guessing a little low. There were always some small numbers on the board, and therefore the all guesses too high betting space really wasn't a factor and was never used the whole game. The second thing was that the betting felt a bit anticlimactic. I was expecting this part to be a little more exciting. I think there were a few reasons here. Each player only has two $1 betting tokens, so you can only place two bets, and depending on how you bet, it's very likely you'll end up coming back with nothing. Some of the questions are so abstract, or the guesses come out so close, it's tough to bet on a specific guess. And instead, most people are betting on the ranged spaces. But this is only a one-to-one -one payout, so if you win, you win $1. Woohoo. And eventually, some players got so tired of coming back with nothing, they just started hedging, splitting their bets between the black range and the red range, which, again at best, makes them one dollar. The most excitement was whoever had the winning guess, because they got the added bonus payout for that round. We had a player win a few of those in a row early on, and it felt a little tough to catch up. But the game only has seven rounds, so at least it plays pretty fast, and it's easy to set up again to start fresh. Production. 
Now in terms of production, the component quality is what really hurts this game. It just screams cheap and it feels like a lot of corners were cut to keep the costs as low as possible. The game mat is made of this thin felt material. When you put it on a table, it bunches and slides around and honestly just looks kind of sad. Especially when you compare it to something like Flamecraft, which comes with a really nice neoprene mat. Even though you can tell it isn't the thickest, plushest mat out there, it's still got a grippy bottom, lays out flat, and looks fantastic. By comparison, the Wits and Wagers Vegas game mat feels like a cheap, one-time use Halloween decoration. I also knew that for this price, the game probably wasn't gonna come with nice poker chip style betting tokens and would probably come with punch out cardboard tokens. But I've never seen a game with cardboard tokens that are this thin. They're about as thick as a baseball card. I mean, really flimsy. My girlfriend kept miscounting the stacks because if two are sticking to each other, you can't even tell. On top of that, for as thin as these money tokens are, it doesn't even feel like they've included enough $1 tokens. The bank kept running out and we'd have to pause the game to, to make change. And a couple of times we were just lucky enough to do enough trading that we had enough $1 tokens for that round. And we were only playing a six person game. I suppose the good thing is that these aren't the hardest things to upgrade if you wanted. The betting tokens are a great candidate for coin capsules, and had I had my iron clays with me, I would have easily used those in place of the money tokens. Lastly though, one of the worst parts about this game, in my opinion, is that the dry erase pens don't have erasers. This is pretty ridiculous for a game where every round is a new question and you've got to clear your previous guess and write down a new one. It's not like a roll and write where maybe you only erase at the end of the game. And the whiteboards weren't the easiest thing to wipe off with a paper towel. To summarize, let's talk about what I liked most about the game. I like that this game is low stakes, lightweight, and great for a wider audience when you have a mix of non-gamers. It's great for higher player counts as well. It plays up to seven and has a lot of simultaneous action. Conceptually, I like the betting aspect of the game. It adds a little more spice and makes it more than just a right or wrong trivia type game. And it helps put everyone on a level playing field. It's really easy to teach and super easy to learn. It plays fast, has pretty good pacing, and doesn't take up a lot of time. In terms of what I liked the least about the game, the game feels cheaply made. It's a bummer because I think a little more table presence would up the excitement and the overall feel. Not having erasers was a definite pain. And the betting felt a bit underwhelming. I wish there were a way to have bigger payouts while still keeping the game balanced. And I wish players could place more bets so that there would be more payouts overall. Final thoughts on Wits and Wagers, it's Vegas, baby. Let's start with the first question. Was this game worth the $6.99 that I paid for it? Honestly, how could you say no? $7 is a small price to pay to see if I like a game or not. Gameplay wise, it's a solid game overall. I can certainly see why it's a classic. And even if I were to never play it again, in that one night with six people, we easily got $7 worth of fun out of it. I think the bigger question is, will I keep this game in my collection? That one's a bit trickier. I'm certainly not in a rush to get rid of it. For now, I've got the space and who knows, maybe I'll give it another try with a different crowd. But at the same time, it's hard to imagine reaching for this game over some others that fit the same kind of audience. I can tell you I was originally thinking I'd get coin capsules for the betting tokens, but honestly, I don't think I'm gonna put any more money into this game. And the minute I do need to free up space on the game shelf, wits and wagers will probably be at the top of the games I'll consider getting rid of first. In terms of scoring, I'm trying to stay true to the BGG rating system here. I'm giving wits and wagers, it's Vegas baby, a six. I would happily play this game if someone else wanted to. At the same time, the production quality is definitely holding it back from having a higher score. To add a little more context to this review, the other game I brought over that night was Green Team Wins, which is a fantastic party game that I talked about in a previous video as well. And everyone that night unanimously liked Green Team Wins more than Wits and Wagers. 
If you've played Wits and Wagers, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Does this game get better over time? Do you have any house rules or tips for upping the experience? Thank you so much for watching, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.